Sometimes I feel like I'm going to be working on this dead inside series my entire life. I think I'd be all right with that. Maybe I'll finally have enough material when I'm 90. I'll put together a photo book and it'll be my magnum opus. The challenge is finding locations to take these pictures. Because, you know, there's a lot of vacant office buildings right, right now with everyone working from home. But it's like, how do you find them? And then once you find them, how do you get access, you get permission to do it? So this location, like all of my dead inside photos so far, I found kind of by chance by shooting this property for my client. So I was here a few days ago doing this as a uh, commission gig to take pictures of their building, happened upon this suite and decided to come back. I'm going to use Portrait 400, but I have the center ND on. Set my so 160. Fifteen seconds at F32. And with reciprocity, that fifteen seconds comes thirty-five seconds, I believe. Yep. I always feel a little weird when I take photos for the series. If you told me twenty-three years ago when I was just getting started in photography that one day, kid, you're going to stumble into a passion project that you're going to be so eager to pursue, you might be working on it your whole life. Touring the national parks? I'd ask with a glint in my eye. Nah, son. Office buildings. Vacant ones. The shittier, the better. But, as I've said before, hopefully a few people get what I'm trying to do with this project. And even if not, 23 years in the game has taught me one thing. Things go much more smoothly if I don't fight my photographic instincts. I've learned to trust my artistic compass. Or at least not argue with it. Because even when it's wrong, it'll treat me better if I just surrender to it. Wow, that, that sounds a lot like an abusive relationship when I say it out loud. So I'm having to use really narrow apertures here because I'm dealing with a relatively small subject reproduced relatively large on the film. Uh, I know it doesn't seem like a small subject, but uh, compared to like, you know, a mountain range or a huge landscape, it's a pretty small subject. Um, and the bigger the reproduction ratio gets, the more you magnify something, the shallower the depth of field gets. So if you want a huge depth of field, you have to use narrower apertures than you would on say a landscape of the mountains. Um, these cameras have tilt, of course, where you can adjust your plane of focus, but that's not helping me at, at all here. There's a technique where you can see if the tilt is actually helping your situation or not, simply by comparing how much the bellows moves um, when you're focusing on near points and far points uh, with and without tilt. And I found that tilt was indeed not helping. So um, narrow apertures it is. But even with Portra 400, the shutter speeds are quite long. Because these overhead fluorescents ain't exactly bright. I probably should have used F45 on these two frames because F32 left the depth of field just a little short, but it's fine. It'll never show in realistic print sizes. F45 would have pushed my exposure time past two minutes and I'm impatient. Also, I've never really shot Portra at exposure times that long and I wasn't sure how it would behave. Color shifts are common at ultra long exposure times and I'm already dealing with funky colors from the fluorescent lights. Now in this composition, I wanted to capture this kind of sad vignette of a plastic plant dispassionately shoved into a sea of surplus office furniture. Fake plants are funny to begin with. We so badly want to be reminded of nature 
when we're in our white boxes, but this place where we spend most of our lives is so inhospitable to life that even keeping a shade-loving plant is too much work. And so we make a facsimile of one out of petroleum. And then one day it's outlived its usefulness and we shove it into a vacant office to collect dust until it's moved to a landfill where it'll live for the next 400 years. Humans are weird. I got one more 4x5 shot in another suite that was mostly torn up. I have a mild obsession with corporate art. You know, those always abstract, utterly unmemorable pieces that neither upset nor inspire a single person in the 15 years they spend hanging on these walls before the color palette is deemed outdated and replaced by some equally derivative work. But then again, are these pieces actually unremarkable? Or is it just because of where they hang? Maybe if it was on the walls of MoMA, everyone would stand around it, expounding on the angst and struggle that can clearly be seen in the artist's brushstrokes. Set and setting matters when it comes to art. Would anyone give a damn about my photos if I wasn't YouTubing about them? This is my first time shooting 4x5 for this Dead Inside series, and I think it'll be my last. My intention with all these images is to one day put them in a book, not blow them up to hang on the wall. So the 4x5 resolution is unnecessary. I think my perfect kit for this series is my 6x17 view camera for the Panos and my RZ67 with a 75mm shift lens for everything else. These give me plenty of detail and all the benefits of lens shift but without having to fight such a shallow depth of field. I just need to find someone who can fix my RZ. Damn thing needs a new cocking mechanism. My mom's cousin reached out to me and asked if I wanted a couple old film cameras she found. And if you're into film photography, you know how that goes. Some distant relative reaches out, hey, I found an old film camera in the attic. I know you're into photography, you want it? And it's like, yeah, awesome. And then you find out it's like some janky ass Minolta from the mid nineties. But uh, she told me what she had and I was like, oh yeah, I'll take it. She had this cool Canon AF35M. This is a really awesome rangefinder. It's uh, autofocus and essentially full auto everything. Uh, you can't control nothing, which makes it a perfect point and shoot camera. Um, even has a built-in flash, which is pretty freaking awesome. So I have a roll of uh, Fuji 400 in here I need to finish off. And uh, what the hell? We'll do it on some uh, old dead inside material. See how it does on 35 millimeter. One minor annoyance with this camera is it has a max ISO of 400. Now, if it had any manual exposure controls, I could get around that, but it doesn't. And 400 ain't enough to shoot handheld in this light without flash. An on-camera flash has a look to it that I kind of dig. It might not be right for this project, I haven't decided yet, but it does add that whole snapshots from a late 90s corporate Christmas party vibe. These were from the second half of my first ever roll of Fujifilm 400, which I'm already in love with. It's cheap, it scans well, and the colors are beautiful. I'd just love to know what branding genius got paid to come up with the name for it. They must have fired the Velvia and Provia guys before they came out with this one. I'll be shooting a lot more of this Fujifilm 400 in the future. Too bad they don't make it in 4x5. All right, time's up on your 10 minute break. Let's get back to work. Yeah, I'm gonna need this. Okay. 